Welcome back, baseball fans. Summer 69-72 carryover league. Tonight, we're in the National League Mountain Division. And we got a game between Las Vegas and Portland. Teams that I often nickname Team 31 and Team 32. Doesn't matter which order you number those in. Why? Because uh, they were the last teams created to come up with a 32-team field, which is what I wanted to do for the Carryover League. Let's look at the standings in the Mountain Division, in the National League. Here we go. Portland and Vegas. Normally, Arizona and Colorado get first dibs at the extra player cards that make up these teams, and they usually do well, but they're both doing poorly this year. One of the reasons why you do poorly is that these extra players are generally good once every four years and it's hard to repeat. And that's proven to be the case. Uh, they're at the bottom and the worst teams from a year ago are at the top. Now we are about to play a game five and a best of seven in which Vegas is currently a half game ahead as they've won three out of the first four. Let's get to looking at the uh, game and Trying to figure out why Las Vegas and Portland are doing well this year? Two different reasons. Let's start with Vegas. Vegas decided to improve a lot of the players they had last year by making them better in the draft instead of adding new guys. So they improved Ken Berry, made him a 1-0 in center field at 289. They improved Tommy Davis, made him a 324 hitter. They improved Woody Fryman, made him a stud left-handed starter, and they improved their closer, Jim Rowland. On the other hand, Portland, believe it or not, made some blockbuster trades in the offseason. They had the rookie rights to Burt Blylevin and traded those back to the Twins, rightfully where Blylevin started his career, and they ended up getting Jim Perry and Rich Reese in the deal. A trade that is outstanding on the short, but not good in the long run, because Perry is near the end of his career, and Rich Reese's 69 card, it's 322, and then after that he turns back into a pumpkin. They also traded for stud closer Hoyt Wilhelm because the Angels had a bunch of great relief pitchers, including Ken Tatum, Dave LaRoche, Eddie Fisher, Greg Garrett. So they acquired a closer, which is very rare for a struggling team, figuring that you don't need to acquire a closer if you very seldom win. But that's not been the case this year, and both these teams are going to play for the division title. Once this series is over and we begin the postseason tournament, well, these two teams will play again to decide first place. So it's Game 5 from Portland. Bragging rights going into the All-Star break. If Portland wins this game, they'll be a half game ahead, but still down three games to two in this series. And I'll play two more games. One or two more games. Today's pitchers for Vegas, Tony Cloninger. We saw him last time on YouTube. He pitched decently, pitched five innings and got a win. And for Portland, it's Ray Sadecki. Let's get going. From Portland, Ken Berry will lead it off. 37, sky's low. Tommy Davis, 35, single. Julio Gote, 4-6-3, double play. Jerry Kenny, the versatile Jerry Kenny. Single one at 12, lines out on a 20. Belanger, 67, bouncers to second. Tim Cullen, 2E6. Very good defense for this Vegas team. Cullen was another guy that improved his defense. Tony Gonzalez, 36, is a K. Excuse me, 36 is single one at 10, line out on a 13. Top of two, John Bacabella, 58, flies left. A-Rod, the original A-Rod, Pitcher X, Sadecki's an E8. He makes the play. Jeff Torborg, 1-7, lines are short. Rich Reese has struggled in the series, 1-7, Ks. Montgomery, 68, bounces to short. Kubiak's 219. He has been rock solid at shortstop defensively until now. 
Finally, an error on this guy. He had been playing exceptionally well. I think it might be the first error in a Las Vegas video for him at short. So, Montgomery's on. Frank Baker, I call him Frank Baker too because there's two Frank Bakers in the league. This is the outfielder, Frank Baker. 47. Base it off Cloninger's card. Montgomery holds the second. Bringing up Ken Boswell. 610, third X, but this is A Rod, a 1E19. Great defense for this expansion team, something you don't normally see. And that's why they're half game in front. All right, third inning at Steve Whitaker, 68 is K. Okay. Tim Cullen, 2 6, pops to second. Kubiak, 57, is a K. Sadeki is cruising along. Byron Brown, 311. Pounce to short. Ty Klein, 48. This is double one of 19. He gets it. Jerry Kenny, 45. Bouncer to short. Kubiak again, 2E19. Makes the play. Runner holds. Runner scoring position. Two outs for Belanger. He bounces to short. Scoreless. End of the fourth. Portland a couple batters ahead, but that's about it. Ken Berry, 57's a K. Tommy Davis, 49, off the Sadeki card. Triple one to seven, doubles a double. Julio Gote, K. Okay. Bacabella, 1 7. Let's take a look at John Bacabella's card. This was a really good pickup. Uh, it didn't seem like much during the draft. He only hit 269. But you got a guy who has power both ways, homers on 1 5 both ways, and can play catcher in first base, and actually. A 3-11 at first base, so he brings you a little bit of defense there. A little under-the-radar pickup that the uh, defensive-conscious Las Vegas team acquired. Here we have triple 1-5 to five single, and that is a single dot dot, and Vegas gets the run, and they are 18 outs away from winning the series. A-Rod, 37, base hit in the left. Bacabella holds a second. And it's Jeff Torborg. 2-3 pops a short. Not very pretty bats in this Vegas lineup, but it's working thus far. Tony Gonzalez, 68 is a walk. Cloninger putting guys on for the third straight inning. Rich Reese, 1-9, and they're taking them off the bases with a 6-4-3 double play. Oh, Rich Reese, really struggling in this series. But he, like I mentioned earlier, he was the key part of that uh, off-season trade for Blylow. Bob Montgomery, 5'10", is catcher's card. Torborgs should be good. He is a 3'5". And he makes the play. One zip in the fifth. Steve Whitaker, 68, is a K. Tim Cullen, 1'8", is a K. Ted Kubiak, 57. Same thing, you guessed it. Three up and three Ks. Sadeki has one, two, three, four, seven strikeouts through five innings and just giving up that one run. Before we go to the bottom half, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Bottom of five, Frank Baker, two, leads off, two, two. Fouls out. Ken Boswell, 2-7, pops out. Byron Brown, 3-10, single one to five, line out. One zip in the sixth. Ken Berry, take a look at him, 1-8 is gonna be a base hit. The one -E, he's a 1-0 with a zero arm. And offensively, this would be his best year of 1972 with the Angels. So good enough to lead off for this team as a C stealer. They don't have much speed or Batting average, you get the idea. You got a plus two arm catcher, and I normally don't hold C, so Ken Barry's gonna try a stolen base. And he's safe, rolling a six. So Ken Barry goes into the stolen base column, I think probably the first time all year. Him, Tommy Davis, and A Rod have the only stolen bases for Vegas. Here is Tommy Davis, the runner in scoring position, he strikes out. Julio Gote, 1-4, bounce to short. Bacabella, 59, bounce at the second. Sadeki comes back in that inning and slams the door. One zip, bottom of six. 
Ty Klein, 53, right X. Whitaker's a 3E13 in right field, and he plays that into a double. Jerry Kenny, 2-7, pops a short. Mark Belanger, 49, sky's the center. They just can't get a hit with two outs. Tony Gonzalez, 38, sky's the center field. And Mr. Cloniger, much maligned Cloniger. He struggled in the winter baseball class. He didn't know if he would even get into the league, but he's been solid. The number three starter for this team. Six shutout innings would be the high point of his pitching of this year. Most likely, with just a 1-0 lead, they might pull him so as not to lose if he puts a guy on. But let's get into the south with Sadeki. He's not going anywhere. A-Rod, 2-10, left. Torborg, 43. Pitcher X, Sadeki, 8. And that's out on the X. Whitaker, 37 is a K. Bottom of the seventh for Cloniger. Put guys on in every inning. Jim Rowland could probably go two innings and try a save. But Cloniger, you know, he's throwing a shutout. You just got to roll it. Rich Reese, 66. That's going to be a double to center field. Bob Montgomery, stretch time. I should have uh, given you the music before the double, but you get the idea. We are listening to Beauregard, 1973. He was a Portland wrestler. And he recorded this uh, uh, bluesy rock thing <laughs> that they would play before all his wrestling matches in Portland in the early 70s. Featuring a very young Greg Sage of the Wipers on guitar. That's the story behind that. All right, so runner at second. It's Bob Montgomery. 2-8. Let's take a look at Bob Montgomery's card. It's a good one. You'll find one. You'll find about three good Bob Montgomery cards, and mostly in alternating years throughout the 70s. Uh, this is one of the good ones. This is the type of player that in a four-year carryover league, you can probably continue to carry this guy forward through 1977. This is a 72 card. So this is the 2-8 single dot dot to tie the game. And Cloninger will come out. So now they left him in there. He's responsible for that runner. He could, he could get a loss. They're going to bring Ken Brett in in the seventh and start turning some of these Portland guys around. Ken Brett in the seventh. Batting for Frank Baker will be the Hawk, Ken Harrelson. Ken Harrelson off the Boston-Cleveland train in 68. He led the league in RBI in 1968. Then in Red Sox traded him to the Indians in 69. This is a 70 card. Ken Harrelson, runner at first, nobody out against Ken Brett. The pitch is a 5'11", pitcher X. Brett's an E0, good luck with this. It's probably going to be a double play, and it is. Put it in the wrong spot, though. Put the 163 down there. And with two outs and nobody on base, it'll be Ken Boswell. It's lefties pretty well. 45, bounces a short. Kubiak, 2 19, makes the play. Oh, we got a good baseball game. 1 to 1 in the eighth. Sadeki. The Portland bullpen is very bizarre this year. They have two lefties and they have two righties. The two righties, John Strohmeyer and Hoyt Willem, have pitched 23 innings. Goose egg, no earned runs. The two lefties, Jerry Arrigo and Fred Norman, 23 innings. They've given up 26 runs. So something must be wrong with one, of the, one side of the mound as the uh, Southpaws are just getting rocked. So, Sadeki being the best Southpaw on the team will, will stay in there, as Vegas is weak against lefties. You're gonna have to break Sadeki to get him out. Tim Cullen, 1-7, sky's the center. Kubiak, 63, rolls the first. Ken Berry, 1-2, is hit by the pitch. 
Will he try a steal with two outs? Do we still have Montgomery in there? Yes, he'll try another stolen base. But this time, a 17, and he's thrown out. All right, 1-1, one, one, bottom of the eighth. Brett's still in there. Byron Brown. 2-9 is a walk. Ty Klein may bunt here because he can't hit. And they have Alan Gallagher and Bob Barton on the bench. Klein will bunt. He'll drop it down. It's a good bunt. You know, we have a runner at second. He's a lefty, Jerry Kenny. He's not going anywhere against Brett. Two, eight. Let's take a look at Jerry Kenny's card. This is a base hit in the left field. Byron Brown with one out, a 14 against. It's Tommy Davis in left field with a plus four arm, makes it one to 18, and I don't even have to roll. He scores the run. Home field advantage, if it's an 18, 19, or 20 for the home team, you just score it. You don't even have to take the chance of getting out on a 19 or 20. That's why home field advantage. Road team, different story. You can get thrown out on a 19 or 20. So Byron Brown scores off the Kenny single, off of Brett. Still got two more lefties coming up this inning, so Brett's going to stick around. Belanger. 67 is a base hit into center field. Kenny, 16 runner, will go coast to coast with one out. And he's thrown out on a 19. That's a tough break. With the two lefties coming up, it was a pretty smart play. Because it was a 16. But it was a great throw by the zero-arm center fielder. And a great break for Las Vegas. So Belanger's at first with two outs. After a guy gets thrown out on the bases, he's going to steal and try and get in a scoring position. And he rolls a 20. So that inning's over. It looked very promising. They do get the lead. And they, uh, they really don't have any defense they can bring in because Kenny and Klein at third and center field. Gallagher and Barton. Well, you could bring in a minus three arm catcher for Montgomery. Let's do that. Bob Barton will come in and catch for Montgomery. It is the ninth inning. It's Tommy Davis, Gote, Bacabella, and I got one word for you. Hoyt Wilhelm. Well, that's two words. But the ageless Hoyt acquired in the offseason the other big trade they made with the Angels. They ended up sending... Pete Ward and a token to the Angels for Wilhelm. The Angels cash that token in with Andy Etcherbaron in a trade to the Orioles to get Don Baylor. So you can look at it as Don, a young Don Baylor for an old Hoyt Wilhelm for the Angels. So you see, the uh, Portland doesn't mind these old guys, but they did, but they did let uh, the Twins and Angels get some good young talent. So in the ninth, Hoyt Wilhelm. Having an all-star type of year, closing out games. He needs to close this thing out to send it back to Las Vegas and to also put Portland back in the first place by half game. It was a well-played game, well-played series, actually, for two really scrubby teams, we thought, coming into this season. Very, very clever game. So, it'll be Davis, a pinch hitter, and Bacabella in the ninth. Tommy Davis, 66 is a K. All right, batting for Gote. My choice of Hanson or Shamsky. I'm going to go Art Shamsky here. Let's take a look at Art. This is his 69 card with the Mets. They surely would have liked him, but they did all right with Crane Pool and Clendenon. They didn't need Shamsky. Art Shamsky. The pitch, 39 is a K. And with two outs, it's John Bacabella. We know a 1 5 is a hammer. We saw the card earlier. The pitch to Bacabella. With two outs in the ninth inning, 6-10, Hoyt Wilhelm, third X. The third baseman's a 3-E-14, and that is your game. Another save for Hoyt Wilhelm. Very clever baseball game. Tough one. Two to one. Portland wins the game, goes a half game back in first place. But all Vegas has to do is go home to the desert and win a baseball game, and they're in first place for the All-Star break. Wilhelm gets a save. Three up and three down ninth inning with two strikeouts. 
Ray Sudecki, nice start. Five hits, a, a run that was earned, a walk, nine strikeouts. Ken Brett, he came in. He actually does get the loss because Cloninger only gave up a tie run. So Brett does get the loss in the eighth inning. Two hits, a run, and a walk, and was helped by some base running errors by Portland. And Tony Cloninger gets a no decision. Five hits, just a one run. But still overachieved. Good for him. A walk and a strikeout. Walk and one strikeout. 1019, 0108, 2715, 2715, 111, 21, 21, 111. Well, competitive baseball. One of these teams is going to the playoffs. Something to think about later on when uh, they're going up against the traditional MLB teams. Most likely teams like the Mets, the Reds, the Pirates, the Dodgers. Who do the what? Who's the le uh, least desirable of the two? It's an interesting debate. So Portland now is 16 and 13, hitting 274 with a 384 team ERA. And Hoyt Wilhelm now is 1 0 with seven saves, 12 and two thirds shutout innings, two walks, and 16 strikeouts. He's gone to the All Star game. Sadecki's 4 and 1. Normally uh, you need more wins to get in the All-Star game than that. And Portland's 15 and 13, just a half game back now. They're hitting 280 with a 396 ERA. Very close numbers to Portland. And their star is hard to say. Well, Tommy Davis is 43 for 114. So what is that? Tommy Davis is sitting 377. Remember I said we improved him? And Ken Berry is only hitting 250, 31 for 121, but that defense and center has been key. We play 438 games. We're hitting 259 with a 384 ERA. And when we look back again to the standings now, you'll see that that half that was there is now there. Series will go back to Las Vegas. If they win game six, they're in first at the All-Star break by a half game. If Portland wins game six, they'll be in first base placed at the All-Star break. And if they win game seven, they'll be in first by a game and a half. That's it tonight from the National League Mountain. Hope you've enjoyed the contest. We'll see you next time. Well, folks, the series turned out to be pure magic. Um, Portland won game six to even the series. Game seven, Jim Perry, the ace against number five starter Ken Johnson. Uh, Vegas has a 4-2 lead. Portland comes back, ties it in the eighth, takes a lead of 5-4 in the ninth. Jim Perry leaves. They bring in Hoyt Wilhelm to get the save. He gets two outs, a single. And then with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning, Art Shamsky, two-run walk-off homer for Las Vegas. That's the first run, the first loss, and the first blown save of the year for Hoyt Wilhelm. Vegas wins 6-5, to five, wins the series four games to three. Wow. <laughs> Exceptional baseball from an unknown source. Thanks for checking it all out.